When it comes to our dog plans, we can use walk cards to give us a lot of flexibility. In my neighborhood, we have this policy where you can only use water on certain dates. And the policy may say, if your house number ends in an even number, you can water your grass on Monday, Wednesday, or Friday. And if it ends on an odd number or with an odd number, you can water your grass on these days. That's easier than saying, here's a list of addresses that can water their grass on Mondays. And here's another list of addresses that can water their grass on these other days. Walk cards allow us to do just that. Instead of defining one dial pair for every possible number, we can group a series of numbers with one dial pair using these wild cards. In this nugget, we'll examine these different wild cards and see how they can be used. So in this nugget, we'll go over different wild cards that we can use within our dial pairs. In the previous nugget, I use a pattern of 212, 555, 1234. So I was very specific in the pattern that it had to match. But imagine if I had an office that had the range of 100 all the way to 212, 555, 999. That's 10,000 numbers. Could you imagine attempting to enter in that many dial pairs? So with walk cards, we could take this pattern, use dots, for example, and the dot here signifies any digits from zero through nine or star. One pattern and one pattern alone, one, two, one, two, five, five, five. Again, zero through nine or zero through nine. 0 through 9, 0 through 9, we've matched the same 10,000 phone numbers, but only one pattern. And that is way more efficient. So wall cards give you the flexibility to build your dial plan when you're trying to minimize your dial plan and not create so many dial pairs. So we'll start with the period here and or dot, and this signifies any digits 0 through 9 or the star on the keypad. Here's a few examples, and this 20 dot dot matches 200 all the way down to 2099. So this matches a hundred possible numbers because the dot is any digit from zero through nine. In the next example, we have two dot by five. So that matches two zero by five all the way down to two nine by five. So here we have 10 possible matches. Next, we have a one three five 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 one and a series of three dots. And this will match A135551100 all the way down to 199. So this gives us a thousand possible matches. The period or dot is widely used in many, many dial plans. I know I have used it many times myself and it's the most common wildcard that you'll see being used in many environments. Next we have the plus and the plus matches one or more instances of the preceding digit. So what does that mean? Five plus two, three. In this example, we're matching one or more instances of that preceding digit. So what matches here? Five, five, two, three, five, 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 two, three, or five, 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 two, three, and so on and so on. This trend can continue up to 32 digits. And why 32? Because that is the maximum length of a dialable phone number. I don't see this being used in many environments, but it's there in the event that you need it. The bracket is a wall card that's also used quite heavily. And we'll go through this first example. We have one, two, three, two, two. So this pattern matches where the first digit is one, two, or three. So this matches one, two, 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 and three, two, two. And the next pattern is one that tricks a lot of people. And if you mentally, put a comma between any two numbers that don't have dashes. This is saying one or four six by five. So again, put that comma mentally in your mind. Don't actually type it out. So this would match one by five, five. This will also match four, five and six by five, 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 five. A lot of people read that as 14, two sets or some combination of, but it's really one or a four through six. If that bracket said one, four, six, then we're matching either one, four, or a six. That dash in there is a grouping. So that's why in this example is four through six. And it's this other example is four or six. In this example, we have five, five, and it's either five or nine. So that would be five, one, two, or five, five, nine, one, two. In our next example, we've combined a few wild cards. So one, 
through three and dots. So this really is one, two, or three being the first digit. And these two is zero through nine. So this could be one, three, five. This could be two, eight, one. This could also be three, five, five. But the first digit has to be a one, two, or three. Then in our final example, we have a carrot. And the carrot simply means where the first digit is not. So carrot not matching. So this would mean this will match eight dot dot. So eight one two, for example, it, it would match nine five five, for example, because a dot is zero through nine. But that first digit can be any digit that's not zero through seven. Now you wouldn't start your extension range with a nine because that's used for the PSTN in most environments. So that's a bad example. But the takeaway here is that when you see a carrot, it's any digits that are not in this instance, zero through seven. Then we have T here, and this matches any number of DAO digits. So what I mean by that, nine, three, two could match. Nine, one, eight, one, three, five, 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 one, two, three, four could match. Nine, seven, seven, three, five, 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 one, two, three, four, five, eight, seven, nine, eight. I mean, this could match any possible number up to from zero to 32 digits. And you used to see this in a lot of adult plans, but this requires the interdigit timeout to be met. Now, what do I mean by that? How would the router or voice gateway know when you're done dialing digits? It needs to wait for the interdigit timeout to expire. And in most gateways, that's 10 seconds by default. So if Bob was here making a phone call to his local pizza joint for lunch, if he dialed a number, those 10 seconds would have to wait because the gateway is patiently waiting for any additional digits to be dialed. After 10 seconds, it goes, oh, you must want to dial this digit. Let me route that for you. Now, after a few seconds, 10 seconds may seem like an eternity for Bob. Then at that point, he goes, my phone's not working. Let me call the help desk. Now, if Bob is savvy enough, he can insert a pound at the end so he can dial his number and hit pound. And that pound tells the voice gateway, don't expect any more digits. Please route my call. But most users are not that savvy to know the press pound at the very end. Where I've seen this used for international calls because dialing to some countries, the amount of digits may vary. So therefore, any number that starts with 011, then T will use for international calls. And that's a good use case for a T. But this also, again, depends on that inter-digit timeout to be met. But most folks mentally, when they think that to dial a different country, are more patient and will wait the 10 seconds because mentally that's acceptable to them because they have to dial a different country. So we'll stop here, but in the next nugget, we'll go over on our gateway and actually see some of these wildcards being used and see how they match. But in this nugget, we discussed wildcards, why they're used, and also saw some examples of different wildcards that we could use to route calls within our voice gateways. I hope it's been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in an IT career or looking to brush up your IT skills, check out cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.